did you kind of feel left out that you didn't get a ticket to the inaugural ball, that you wouldn't be going? Don't worry about it, because word has it, it's not that great. In fact, all nine of the inaugural balls are supposed to be kind of difficult. Jim Bandat joins us again to talk a little about inaugural balls, and you kind of wrote the book on this whole inauguration. Democracy's Big Day is your recent book, all about inaugurations. Right. When it comes to the inaugural balls, why does everybody think that they're so spectacular, so glamorous, when in fact, they're really kind of nasty? They're not like they used to be. When it started off in 1789, there was an inaugural ball. Not an official event, but it was a week later, but it was an elegant affair. They brought in wonderful food from Europe. And the same thing for the very first inaugural ball back in 1809 with James Madison and his party giving wife Dolly Madison. But in recent times, like you say, it's not like that. Back in 1997, Bill Clinton had 14 inaugural balls. There'll be eight tonight. And the food is not much these days. For $5.50 at Clinton's inaugural, they could, you could get a ham and cheese croissant for, for, in a plastic container. And you're wearing a, a black tie and taffeta gowns, and you're eating out of a plastic container if you can get through the line. That's right. Big lines. There were no hors d'oeuvres in 97 either. This year, I hear there are going to be hors d'oeuvres. There may be some better food, perhaps some Texas barbecue, and the cost has gone down. It's $125 this year. It was $150 four years ago. That doesn't include your price of drinks, and again, if you can get through the line to even get a drink. It'll be very crowded in there. There's hardly any room to move. Uh, you can hardly hear the orchestra, which is probably playing some hokey music. Uh, four <laughs> years ago, they had better bands, I think, than they're going to have this time. How many thousands of people actually end up going to these balls? I, I've heard something like 35,000 people at the uh, eight inaugural balls. They'll be moving them in and out. Lots of people. So clearly what you're talking about is um, a pair of shoes that's probably trashed by the end of the evening. If you've got a big bag, it's going to be catching you on everybody you walk by. Why then does it remain so prestigious? Or do you end up going to one ball for posterity and then avoid all the rest? Well, the big thing is to see the new president. That is going to be the big event for everyone who attends these affairs. The president and the first lady will make an appearance at each and every inaugural ball. And it's a place to, to, to say that you were there, to let people know, hey, I went to an inaugural ball. And it's a big event for those people who do attend those I things. I've got these stats here. I think it says more than 75,000 people attended the inaugural balls for Clinton in 97. Again, you said the ticket price was 150. Who establishes the ticket price? And who establishes the numbers that they can actually jam into these things? Well, it's the presidential inaugural committee is always involved in these things. There were nearly twice as many inaugural balls last time as this time, so it'll be fewer people this time. Okay, so uh, obviously it's been a very early morning. George W. Bush, who was then president-elect at 6.30 a.m., rose. His father did some exercising. He had coffee with his brothers Marvin and Neil. They're going to have to stay up pretty late to make all uh, eight balls tonight, aren't they? They will be up late. It has been a long day. He also had coffee with the with the Clintons at the White House, so probably a lot of caffeine tonight. He was making a bunch of jokes about having to uh, practice his speech and also practice the, the fox trot or the box step or something ridiculous. Do, do presidents actually, or presidents elect actually try to rehearse dancing before they have to go to, the, do they just do one dance and then uh, amscray? Well, that wasn't really part of my book. I haven't done a lot of research <laughs> on that particular issue, but I do know at some inaugural functions, the president has played musical instruments. Richard Nixon did it, and so did Bill Clinton. Yeah, no kidding. We've all seen him. Uh, Arsenio Hall, I think, was his debut saxophone playing. But essentially, if you're one of these people who shows up, you've paid so much. Hey, quiet, we're live. You've paid so much money to get into this ball. You've got your gown. You've got your gear. You've got your limo. You're going to see the president and his wife maybe, what, for about 10 minutes, if you get a glimpse at all? That's all. The president and the first lady have got to make each and every inaugural ball. They will attend each and every one, so you're right. They won't be there for very long. Okay, Jim Bandat, thanks very much.